Hello everybody, this is Petey from Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and here we are with a little small tutorial on splash screens. I decided to go ahead and make this one here while I was uploading some videos just because I do get asked this question a few times and uh, it's pretty simple to do. So I've broken it down into two examples here and the first one is just displaying a splash screen for a certain amount of seconds and then you go off and do something else. Uh, usually it's loading up another level. Uh, basically it can be whatever you want. But uh, I think most cases just load another level. So let's go ahead and look at the scenes here. I've created scene one, which is nothing more than just you know the camera and a three 3D text that just says scene one, just to let you know that you're there. And in scene zero, I've gone ahead and threw in a GUI texture for my splash screen, but really you could have anything going on here. You could have you know maybe a video playing or whatever you want, some game object there up in your hierarchy. And I'm going to come down to the scripts. And the first one we're going to look at is the splash screen delayed. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag this on. And we'll notice that I only have one public variable here. And that's our delay timer. So let's go ahead and open up the script. And like I said, it's only a few lines of code. I've gone ahead and set a delay time. And by default, I've set it to five. But keep in mind that whatever you put in the inspector over here overrides whatever your default timer is. You're, by doing this here, you just kind of guarantee yourself that you're, by default you're going to have a time set in there. Uh, so after that, I've come down to my start function, and I've actually changed the start function from void start to ienumerator start, and it's just because I'm using a yield statement in here. And all I'm going to do is just wait for the amount of time that we've specified here. Now, because this is a float, you don't have to wait for like a whole second. You could easily have waited for you know, three and a half seconds or whatever you want your delay to be. And then after that, you want to go off and do something. And in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and load up scene one. Now I'm just going to leave the default to five seconds. It's you know not that long, but it's long enough to know that you know something. It was waiting. So we just wait here, look at the screen, and there we go. It goes on to scene one. Great. Uh, but most of the time, when you're using a splash screen like that, you really should be doing something in the background instead of just you know having your your device sitting there doing nothing. So for that example, I've gone ahead and made splash screen loader. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to go ahead and remove this one. And I'm just going to drag the splash screen loader on it. And we have two variables here. Again, the delay time, the default timer is five. And it works just the exact same, you know, the amount of time you want it to wait and done. So the way I have this script working is I have it, I want it to delay for a certain amount of seconds, which in this case is five. But while it's doing that, it's going to be doing stuff in the background. And when it's done doing its stuff in the background, that's when the, the done Boolean gets checked. And I want this to splash screen to be displayed until, well, for a minimum of this amount of time. And also until we're actually done doing whatever. So we could be pulling in assets from a website, maybe loading some asset bundles up. Uh, we could be drawing geometry or something in the background and we don't want it to be rendered yet. Uh, there's all sorts of things to do, but the basic framework is going to be the same. Uh, so let's go ahead and we'll load this script up. And as we see, we have my two public variables up here, my delay time and my boolean uh, done. And I've gone ahead and set a private uh, float here for a timer. Now all this timer does is just count down from whatever time we have set up for in our inspector. So as you can see, we come down to start. My timer is set to delay timer. And the first line in update, it just counts down. So after we set the timer, we're going to call this coroutine. It's just going to be some function that does something. And in this function here, it just, you know, maybe you're fetching assets, whatever. You're doing something, but the key point is that you're going to have some sort of yield statement in there. And, well, you need the yield statement because it's a numerator. And after the yield statement, you want to check to make sure that everything was done properly the way you want it to. And then you're just going to set the flag to be done. Now I have it commented out here. I think for the first run, we'll go ahead, we'll put that back on. And let's take a look to see what it's doing every frame. So every frame we're taking this timer, which of course is set to whatever you have the delay time at. And it's just going to decrement it by the amount of time it took to render this frame from the last frame. And then it's just going to check to see if you know the timer is greater than zero. So have we waited at least the minimum five seconds? Uh, if we haven't waited five seconds yet, then just return. There's no point in checking anything else or doing anything else in this function. Let's just get out. Uh, but if we have waited at least five seconds, then it's going to go ahead and check done. 
to see if we're actually done the job that we wanted to do. And if we are, then we're going to do something. In this case, we're just going to load up level one. Now, because I actually don't have any work here, it's going to check it right away. But you can see that right there, that it does still wait five seconds, even though done is checked. And it's going to go on to scene one. Let's go ahead, we'll run it again. I'm just going to uncheck done. Okay, we'll select it again, we'll start it up. And I guess I should have put some timer in here. Let's go ahead and do that, just so you can see that, yes, we are past the time that it's supposed to be. So we'll throw a debug log in here. And all we're going to do is just take a look at what the timer variable is currently at. There we go. And we'll go ahead, we'll stop that. We'll start this back up. And we can see the timer, it's counting down. It is now past zero. And done isn't checked, but we're still sitting here. So if we came over here and actually checked done, it would actually go on to the next scene. Uh, so there you go. And actually by adding that timer, it made me realize that we really don't need to decrement the timer every time, even after uh, it's reached zero. So I'm going to go ahead and actually just move this in here. Uh, this way here, if we haven't waited the five seconds, go ahead and decrement the timer. If we have waited over five, it'll end return. And if we have waited over five seconds, there's no point in you know wasting that one cycle to decrement. So yeah, there you go. Uh, very simple splash screens. Uh, you should be able to expand on this pretty easily, and I hope that answers your question. Uh, thanks for the question, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.